Welcome to the Six Miles to Supper podcast. I'm your host, Kayla Cox, and I've lost over 80 pounds with intermittent fasting six days a week, eating whatever I wanted at my meals, taking a cheat day every Sunday, and walking six miles a day. And I'm here to help you on your weight loss journey. In today's episode, I want to talk about how to gain confidence. Um, Because this is a really important part of the weight loss journey. It's kind of one of those things uh, you might not think about as being, you know, like when you're trying to lose weight, like, oh, it's important to also at the same time try to gain confidence. But I want to encourage you that um, if if you are not currently confident, and I think that's a a thing that happens, or at least it happened to me, um, it was like the more weight I gained, the the more uh, I lost my confidence. And um, I kind of like, uh, I just didn't, uh, I, I got to the point where I, I didn't uh, feel like I could just um, say things out loud sometimes, uh, you know, couldn't speak my mind. Um, and uh, and it, it was kind of this vicious cycle because the less I would speak my mind, uh, the more I would end up emotionally eating, I think. So the thing is, though, you can start to gain confidence, even if right now you're in the very early stages and, uh, you know, maybe you're uh, you're not really losing a lot of weight yet. Uh, but I would like to encourage you that you you can uh, start to gain confidence, even if the scale's not moving down. And I think what you'll find is as your confidence increases, your success with weight loss uh, will also increase. Because the thing is, is if you can feel confident just in one area of your life, uh, it kind of like can spread into other areas. And, um, and I think if you're a you feel confident, you're going to be more likely to stick with your plan. You'll, you'll have confidence in your plan. You'll have confidence in your ability uh, to figure things out. Like, you know, when, when things are going kind of sideways and you're like having a problem uh, with, with weight loss, you know, maybe the scale's stalling out or maybe it's trending up a little bit. If you have confidence, you'll be able to uh, figure it out and believe in yourself because that's really the ticket is believe in yourself, have confidence, and, and, and you will figure it out. So, um, and, I, and, and that's really the big thing is as long as you just don't quit with weight loss, you will get to where you want to go. It's just about just not quitting. So um, uh, I look back uh, at uh, my notes. Uh, I was. I'm, I'm writing a book right now, and I was looking back at some of my notes from 2015. So 2015 was um, a, a year of a lot of changes for me because uh, 2014 I had said, okay, I've got to get the weight off. I've got to figure this out for good. Um, I don't want to have to keep struggling with this. And uh, so 2014 was a year where I I struggled a lot. I, I didn't really do a whole lot. Um, but in 2015. Uh, that's when I really got serious. I, I weighed myself for the first time in a, you know, in years and, uh, I got, um, really clear with myself about my goals and what I wanted to do. And as that year went on, I, I was making notes about, you know, things I was doing. I was writing down every victory, uh, I could think of and I was keeping track of it. And, um, and looking back at those notes from 2015, so that's, you know, four years ago, um, I, I realized like, wow, I was in a totally different place there. I mean, I, I am by no stretch of the imagination a super duper confident person right now. I still uh, have a long way to go, but I've made a lot of progress. And so that's the first thing I would encourage you right now. Start making notes um, because uh, you will encourage yourself if you can see that you are making progress, things that used to make you feel you know not very confident. Uh, and, and as time goes on, how you are becoming more confident. Um but there are a few different things. I'm going to give you three different things that have helped me um, to to build my confidence. Um, and the good news is the first two are actually uh, really pretty easy to do. Um, at, uh, and then the third one's pretty hard. So the first one is your posture, just sitting up straight. And uh, this is something uh, that I think is really interesting. I, I would, um, I'd, there are two different uh, references I want to point you to uh, that that I think are are really good because they can explain uh, more of the uh, the physiological and psychological aspects of this better than I can. The first one is Amy Cuddy. She had a TED talk um, about power posing, which is basically sitting up straight, just you know sitting up straight and being uh, uh, confident in your posture. And by being confident in your posture, it actually makes you a more confident person. Um, And uh, so I would encourage you to go watch her TED Talk because uh, it is uh, 
really a, a, a really good one that uh, that I reference a lot, you know, in my own mind, I'll, you know, if, if I'm if I'm feeling uh, o- overwhelmed or, or just kind of like, you know, doubtful of, of myself or whatever, uh, I will remind myself, you know, she, you know, the, all the different science that she talks about. And then, you know, I'll sit up straight or I'll, I'll, I'll do the power pose, which is basically just uh, one of them is to stand up straight. Like you just stand up with your hips apart and uh, you look basically like Wonder Woman and you just do that pose and you hold it for like two minutes. And, and I know it sounds silly. Like you might be sitting there thinking that will help anything, but it does. It is like magic. So I would encourage you. That's one simple, simple step, like that you can just try. It doesn't, you don't even have to be out in public when you do it. You can do it in the privacy of your bedroom. Like, I, like when I first started power posing, um, uh, I did it with my door locked, uh, because again, you know, like part of this whole thing is you don't feel confident. You feel kind of self-conscious and you just, you're not sure. And so it can be kind of uncomfortable to even try power posing, but, um, I would lock my door and, uh, and I would do the power pose and I was like, wow, this is interesting. So then I started to, you know, get more comfortable with it. And now, you know, I've, I've shown my kids how to do this and, and, uh, and it, it really does help. So I would encourage you just, that's one little step you can take. Um, and also just, um, you know, just noticing your posture throughout the day. And, uh, and if you start to notice like your, uh, another thing she talks about in the Ted talk is like touching your neck a lot. If you're touching your neck, that's like a signal that you are feeling, uh, kind of, uh, threatened. So uh, I've noticed <laughs> a lot of times, like when I'm touching my neck, I'm also worrying about stuff. So it's like, it has become the signal to me like, okay, if I'm touching my neck, I need to look at my posture and stop touching my neck and sit up straight. And, uh, and it really does help. Um, another uh, reference, if you, if you'd like to go a bit deeper with this is uh, Jordan Peterson's book, uh, 12 rules for life. And one of his rules for life is to stand up straight with your shoulders back. And he goes into a lot more depth about psychologically how that helps you out in life. And, um, and I tell you what, it is, it is a game changer. If you just work on your posture, just sitting up straight, it can make a world of difference. I've always just, man, I've always had horrible posture. Um, uh, my mom was constantly on me about like, sit up straight, sit up straight. And it is true. Like if you just sit up straight, uh, your world just is better. So, uh, that's the first thing that you can do. The next little step you can take is by, you know, just working on eye contact with people. And the good news is, you know, you have lots of opportunities during the day with people you're interacting with to look them in the eye, just look them in the eye when you're talking to them. And if, you know, if you're really, uh, bad about this and I, and I realized, um, wow, I don't make good eye contact a lot of times, like with waitresses or, or just, you know, at places, uh, that you, maybe you're interacting with like cashiers or, uh, or just anybody, you know, at the doctor's office or whatever. Um, but just making a practice out of looking people in the eye. And if you find that to be really difficult, then just start out with just members of your family, you know, like your kids, your, your, uh, your husband or your wife, and then, uh, you know, and then keep, that habit up. And it, it, there's just something about it that makes you more confident when you look somebody in the eye and you tell them, uh, or when you talk to them. So, uh, that's the second thing you can try. Now the third one, and this one I think is probably the most important one, but it's also the hardest one. And I am, uh, like I said, a work in progress, but I can tell you that in hindsight, when I, when I really look at the biggest strides I've made, uh, when my confidence has gone up, uh, uh, the most consistently it's when I've gotten out of my comfort zone. And, uh, I, I've made a practice for the past year or so, uh, to have this as a question in my uh, journal. I do like the, uh, the five minute journal and, uh, and, and, uh, or it's basically a variation because I just write it out. I write out the questions. And, uh, so basically the five minute journal is just a, uh, I start with a, some sort of quote, a motivational quote or something. And then, uh, I write down three things I'm grateful for and, uh, three ways to make today great. And any affirmations that I have that's in the morning, I do that. But at night, uh, normally the question would be, uh, wh- what are three amazing things that happened today? And, uh, how could I have made today better? And I add a, a another question, which is, how did I lean in to discomfort today? And uh, that has been good for me because I, it makes me look uh, for opportunities during the day. Cause I know that question is coming up each night. I'm going to need to answer that question. Um, so it makes me look for little opportunities during the day to 
get outside my comfort zone just a little bit, you know, one, one little thing I can do. And so I'm going to give you some examples from my own life. Um, and, uh, and, and so that maybe that can help, you know, like if you're thinking, well, how do I even do that? I, I'll, I'll share with you things, um, that I've done that have really helped. So the first one was, um, and, and again, keeping a, a log of this somewhere is so helpful because it really does help you to see your, your progress and kind of like the ways you change over time. I was looking back at my notes from 2015, and one of the things I wrote down was, I'm, I'm trying new exercises, even though I feel self-conscious or scared. And I remember vividly back in that, at that time in my life, I felt afraid to even try you know, new exercises, like, you know, uh, a, a certain kind of lift or, um, uh, or, or just, you know, like, uh, trying to do sprints on the treadmill, you know, just like these things were hard to even try. And nowadays it's like, oh man, I'll, I'll do any of those things. I feel very confident. I, I don't, that's not, uh, uh, outside my comfort zone anymore. Um, and that's a note too. What I've I, one thing that helped me in the beginning, instead of saying like get outside my comfort zone because that seemed too scary, I would I would tell myself I'm expanding my comfort zone, and really I I do think that that's the way it works, you know, like uh, because at first it is uncomfortable, but then that becomes a new comfort zone for you. So you know, as I started, I was going to the gym in 2015. I was going every day, and the first day I went, I felt like a complete misfit, like outsider. I felt like I didn't belong there. I was, um, you know, like I, I was just focused on the people around me who looked way better body wise, like they were really in shape. There were, there were other people there, um, that had bodies like mine, but I focused on those people who just, man, they had it all together. I thought, you know, um, and, uh, I felt like I didn't belong and I, and I would hang out in the women's gym area. There was like this one, one little secluded area that had like, um, where people couldn't see in and I would, I would stay in there. Um, and then eventually though, I told myself, I got to get out there. I got, I've got to make myself go out into that mixed use area. And I did get out there. And you know what happened was as time went on, I got more and more comfortable and I felt like, hey, I belong here. And that gave me confidence, but it took that getting outside there, like taking those steps out and doing those things. Um, and, uh, and, and, and it just, it, it opens up your world a little bit more. And, um, and, and, and there are other things that maybe seem silly. Like when I'm going to say this out loud, I think, wow, I can't believe that that would actually, at one point it, it made me feel self-conscious and, and, uh, and scared, but like walking in my house, <laughs> which, um, seems like probably the safest thing in the world to you. And, and like, why would you even feel self-conscious? But I thought it was weird. I thought it's weird that I walk six miles inside my house because I was just making laps inside my house. I would just like walk from my bedroom to the end of the hall and then back again, or just around and around my bedroom. And here was what I was thinking. What if people are like looking in my windows and they see me walking around? Are they going to think I'm weird? Are they going to think I'm crazy? You know, but ultimately uh, the more I did it, the more I realized, well, first of all, no one cares and no one's paying attention, but uh, it just gave me confidence. Like I can do what I want. And that translated also because I had made that promise to myself to get my, my steps in my, you know, 14,000 steps was my step goal. Um, and in 2016, especially I was doing that every single day. Uh, I told myself the only excuse that I will give myself, like the only way i uh, I'm going to excuse myself from that is if, um, like we are like, there's a, like a, like, like if I am physically ill and cannot, uh, do it. And, um, uh, and so I was very, very consistent in getting my steps in, but sometimes that meant that I had to get my steps in, in weird places. Like I would need to get up, uh, maybe in and walk, uh, in a parking lot. Like if we were, you know, for whatever reason, if our day was, you know, uh, like if part of it was, I was waiting in the car or something like that, uh, I would have to get out of the car and walk, you know, you know, do my steps out in the parking lot. And that felt so weird at first, but, it, and it was so out, outside of my comfort zone, but then I realized like, oh, nothing bad happened. Like in my mind, I was like scared. I don't know that people would call the cops because I'm, you know, out there walking around <laughs> or, or something that's never happened. And I've gotten my steps in, in a lot of different places, but it built my confidence to, to do something that felt uncomfortable. And, and nowadays it's like, I'll, I'll walk anywhere. And I, and I know from experience, it's like, it's no big deal. Um, uh, also doing things like barefoot hiking. I remember, you know, the first time I, uh, 
even came across the idea of barefoot hiking, that seemed like, oh, wow, that's that's interesting. It, it seemed interesting, but it also seemed like, oh, people are going to think you're so weird and uh, and all that. And again, you know, it was the first day that I got out there. Uh, it was getting outside of my comfort zone because I thought people are going to think I'm crazy. You know, uh, they're going to see me without my shoes on. And, and and again, I thought maybe, you know, uh, like people will think I am crazy and, and will I call the police or something. But they don't. They, 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 um, the only thing uh, most people don't even really notice that you're walking barefoot in the woods. But uh, I, I met another guy actually uh, on, on a hike. He, he was passing by and he didn't have any uh, shoes on. And he's, you know, he said something like, oh, hey, another barefooter. Um, and that's pretty much the only recognition I've gotten from it. So uh, it's it's been interesting. But but the thing is, it's like um, I could have let that that fear hold me back. And, and maybe I never would have tried barefoot hiking. But you know what? My life got a lot better when I started barefoot hiking because it was this new experience that, I, and I love, that is my preferred way to hike now is to go barefoot and just to feel uh, the ground beneath my feet. It is, it is really awesome, uh, but it took getting outside my comfort zone and, and it, and it has built my confidence. So, uh, and, and then, you know, it, and it's been, uh, I've done other things too, like doing this podcast is an example of something that I was uncomfortable with at first, but you know, now it, it's, you know, I'm, I, I feel a lot more comfortable and uh, the same with my YouTube channel. I felt very uh, afraid the first time I put a video up there. And then as time went on, it's, you know, uh, it, I feel more confident about it. I just don't worry uh, as much as I used to. And, um, and, and then this confidence. So as I've built confidence, it has helped me to then be able to set boundaries with people, to be able to say no to people, uh, to be able to speak my mind. That, that was been a major part of this is to, be able to say what's on my mind um, and what's on my heart to tell my husband, like, here, you know, here's something that's, you know, bothering me and, uh, and, and then to be able to work that out. Uh, and, uh, and that was something I had a, a hard time doing before, just, you know, expressing my emotions. Um, and so, uh, it, so this whole thing, uh, all these steps in taking and building self-confidence have been so uh, worth it. And, um, and it, it, it is kind of scary. So, uh, but I want you to know it is worth it. So, um, I would encourage you right now, like if you, if you think, you know, I, I have become not so confident, uh, try those things, you know, try, uh, power posing, try si just sitting up straight, uh, make that a habit, um, work on eye contact with people and then work on getting outside of your of your comfort zone, just in little ways, just, just do the tiniest little things. Um, I think that's one thing we think sometimes it's like, oh, well, it needs to be this huge thing. That's really, really scary. And, uh, and maybe that works for some people, but for me, the thing that worked was just to do these little things that just kind of like, just barely steps outside my comfort zone. And now my comfort zone is much larger. So, um, and, you know, keeping track of your progress, uh, writing things down, like when, when you have a victory, uh, in the self-confidence department, you do something that's uncomfortable, write it down. I did this today and it was uncomfortable, but this is, you know, uh, what I did and I uh, keep that like in a, in a Google doc. Uh, I love those because it's easy to reference. It's easy to access. You can, they, they stay, uh, in the cloud. So, you know, no matter where you're at, you can access it or you can write it down in, in uh, a journal you're keeping. I highly recommend journaling <laughs> during your, during your weight loss journey. Uh, I have found it to be a, an excellent tool. So I hope that that helps you. Uh, it's certainly, I think worth the effort to work on this because you will have hard times in the weight loss journey where, where your self-confidence just kind of gets, uh, undermined. I think sometimes, uh, by the scale or plateaus or just, you know, maybe somebody makes a remark or something like that. But if you, but if you have that confidence there, uh, it will help you to keep going. So uh, I hope you enjoyed this episode and I'll see you in the next one. Do you want to lose the weight without getting rid of the foods you love and that you know you'll go back to eating again anyway? My book, The Laid Back Guide to Intermittent Fasting, teaches you how to practice intermittent fasting so that you lose the weight sustainably and keep it off for good. You can get the audiobook read by me for free when you sign up for your 30-day trial of Audible. The link is in the show notes. And if you've gotten value from this podcast and you'd like to let other people know about it, it'd be great if you could leave a review on either iTunes or wherever you get your podcast. Thanks.
If you have a topic you'd like me to cover on this podcast, you can submit your request at sixmilestosupper.com slash podcast.